All right, so this is our uh, Agilent Eclipse spectrofluorimeter. So it's a fluorescence spectrometer. And although it is relatively similar to a UV-Vis spectrophotometer, it's, uh, it has unique features. Uh, for example, when we open the sample compartment, you can see that we have an excitation beam that comes from the right through a little window. Um, it illuminates the sample, which is then excited by the incoming radiation. And so that uh, promotes electrons to a higher molecular orbital, which slightly changes the configuration of the molecule. It's in an excited state. And then it relaxes back down to its ground state by emitting some of the energy as fluorescence. So fluorescence is emitted 360 degrees, therefore the detection system is actually placed at a right angle from, uh, from, the, from the excitation beam. So we have an emission line at a 90 degree angle from the excitation beam. So due to the setup of the optics, we use four-sided transparent quartz sample cells like this one. Uh, they're one centimeter in diameter, so we have a consistent path length. Uh, across the sample, and they're optically transparent in both the uh, UV and the visible range. All right, so since the system doesn't open up where I can actually show you the optical features inside, um, I'm, I'm going to try by using a layover of a schematic uh, so I can describe um, what actually happens inside using, um, using a diagram. So there we have it, schematic from Agilent for the fluorescence spectrometer. We start with our source, the UV-Vis xenon flash lamp. The beam shines toward a diffraction grating where we get dispersion of our wavelengths. This makes up our excitation monochromator where we optimize the selection of our excitation beam, which then encounters a beam splitter. One arm of that beam goes to a reference detector for our excitation beam and the other is directed toward our sample. The sample is excited, producing characteristic fluorescence. That fluorescence emission is, uh, moves through um, a few other optical devices to focus it on a diffraction grating, which is our emission monochromator where we can actually optimize the wavelength we observe. That optimal selected wavelength then moves to our photomultiplier tube, which is the detection system for our device. And that concludes our tour of the Agilent Carry Eclipse.